This video is going to be devoted to determinants, and we're really only scratching the surface in this video. There's a lot that can be said about these numbers, and they have a lot of different significance. I'm just going to go over the basics and tell you how to calculate them in a couple ways. Hopefully we'll be able to use this as a starting point for our discussions, and I encourage that you practice calculating determinants because it takes some practice to be able to calculate them quickly and efficiently. Let's begin by recalling the formula for the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, which is something that we've seen before. If you have a 2 by 2 matrix A, which we're going to write as A, B, C, D, the determinant, and you should absolutely memorize this, is AD minus BC. So the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is a number, AD minus BC. Throughout this discussion we're having about determinants, let's go ahead and assume that we're only dealing with square matrices. Determinants are really only defined for square matrices. So for a square matrix, the determinant completely determines whether A is invertible or not. The statement is that if the determinant of A is 0, the matrix is not invertible. We have a special word for this, it's singular. And if the determinant is any non-zero number, that means that the matrix is invertible and you can find its inverse. This is true whether you have a 2 by 2 matrix or a 200 by 200 matrix. There's different notation that you'll see for determinants. The two types of notation that I'll use will be just det A, which is hopefully very obvious, and then occasionally something that looks like an absolute value. I'm going to use that to mean determinant when I don't want to write det, det, det over and over. So there's different strategies for calculating determinants, but a very important one is the strategy of cofactor expansion. So I'm going to go over that one in detail. Cofactor expansion is a strategy that works well if you have a bigger matrix that's kind of complicated, but it also works fine for small and simple matrices as well. It's a general strategy. Let's set up a little bit of terminology before I demonstrate how to use cofactor expansion to calculate a determinant. So we've got our square matrix A. So the minor M i j, i and j in the subscript, is going to refer to a determinant of a matrix that you get when you delete row i and column j. And then the cofactor Cij of an entry Aij is going to be a number, and it's the number that you get from the minor Mij, where it's been adjusted by a sign, negative 1 to the i plus j. All right, let's um, take an example and let's look at a minor and let's look at a cofactor just for practice. We'll take for our example A to be the 3 by 3 matrix given here. And let's look at, say, minor M12, and let's look at cofactor C21. All right. So for the minor M12, by definition, this is going to be the determinant of the smaller matrix that we get by deleting the first row and the second column. So for this, I'm going to take my matrix A, and I'm going to delete the first row and the second column. That leaves for me a 2 by 2 matrix. As long as I'm deleting one of each, I'll naturally still be left with a square matrix. And so I'm looking for the determinant of 13, 9, 4, minus 3. And fortunately, I have a 2 by 2 formula that I can use to calculate this determinant. So this will be 13 times minus 3, AD minus BC, and minus 9 times 4, which works out to be minus 75. So that's the minor M12. How about cofactor C21? Well, the cofactor is, is a similar calculation, but now we need to incorporate a sign. So this is going to be minus 1 to the 2 plus 1 times the determinant of the minor M21, which is different from the minor M12. So in this case, actually, let's, let's do the method where we copy A there again and delete what we need to delete. In this case, we're going to be deleting the second row and the first column. So we'll be getting rid of this, and we'll be getting rid of this, leaving with us with a 2 by 2 matrix consisting of 7, 1, and 2, 3. Now, 2 plus 1 is 3, so negative 1 to the, to the 3 is negative 1, so this gives us negative, and then the determinant. And for the determinant, we will use our 2 by 2 formula. So 7 times minus 3 minus 1 times 2. So this will work out to be a positive 23. So for the sake of example, there's a minor and there's a cofactor. This is all still set up, and we haven't actually gotten to the formula for the determinant of the entire matrix yet, but don't worry, we'll get there. Before we do, I want to make a little remark about the signs of the cofactors. These formulas with negative 1 to the i plus j are a bit cumbersome, so something you, that you might observe if you work many of these calculations is that cofactors have an obvious sign pattern. And it's jotted down here in the case of 2 by 2, 3 by 3, and 4 by 4 matrices. 
So you'll notice if you have minus 1 to the i plus j, and i plus j works out to be odd, this is going to give you a negative 1. Whereas if you're raising it to an even power, that's going to give you a positive 1. In the different cases of having n by n matrices, you can see that these signs alternate from left to right and from top to bottom. The thing to remember is that you're always going to be starting with a plus in the 1, 1 position, because 1 plus 1 is 2, and that's even, and then it proceeds from there. Now, it doesn't wrap around, so it proceeds left to right and top to bottom, but it doesn't wrap. And by that I mean, and take a look at the 2 by 2 case, you have a plus minus, and in the next row you have a minus plus. So it doesn't wrap around uh, unless the dimensions of your matrix are odd by odd. So this is just a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a shortcut if you want to keep track of signs in this way. Now, let's state the general determinant formula. A cofactor expression for the determinant of your general matrix A is the following sum. You are summing over J from 1 to N and taking A1J, C1J. If you write out this sum, there's N terms in it, starting with A11, C11, then A12, C12, and so on and so forth, increasing in this case in the second index. Well, this is a general determinant formula, but it isn't the one. This is exactly cofactor expansion along row one. But as it turns out, any row or column will do for a cofactor expansion. Now, rather than writing down even more general formulas, I'd like to walk through an example. Cofactor expansions are best learned by doing rather than reading formulas. The example that I'm going to use is a three by three matrix A. This is not the same matrix that we had before. Minus two, one, zero, zero, one, two, three, zero, seven. So let's calculate the determinant of this matrix doing cofactor expansion first along row one, and then we'll do cofactor expansion in a different way along column two, the second time we calculate it. Okay, so when we do cofactor expansion along row one, we're gonna be using the entries of this row. So the determinant of A is going to be given by, first we take entry minus two. So we take entry minus two, and then we multiply times the cofactor that corresponds with the entry in spot 11. One. So here I would write C11, but I'm just going to use the numbers. So I have a, a positive sign, and then I have the determinant of the smaller matrix, 1, 2, 0, 7. That smaller matrix came from eliminating the first row and the first column. So here, this came from minus two, one, zero, zero, one, two, and three, zero, seven. Sometimes it's useful to copy down the larger matrix to keep track of what you're deleting. This is the first of three summons that we're gonna have. Now we add up the next cofactor as we move down the row. So we're gonna have the entry, which is a one, times the sign, which is a negative one. These signs, by the way, come from minus one to the one plus one, and minus one to the one plus two, meaning row one, column two. And then we have the determinant of the smaller matrix. In this case, the smaller matrix is gonna be obtained by deleting the first row and the second column. So deleting the first row and the second column gives us zero, two, three, seven. And then the last sum in, we get from entry zero, a sign, which will be a positive one, and then the determinant of a smaller matrix. Ultimately, this won't matter because we're multiplying by zero, but I want to write it down for the sake of the example. Here would be, we would be deleting the third column in the first row, and that would leave us as zero, one, three, zero. At this point, we have some two by two determinants to work out. So continuing along, we're going to have here uh, minus two times one times seven minus two times zero. And then we have a minus zero times seven minus two times three plus a zero. Working out these numbers, we see that we get minus eight. So minus eight is the determinant of the matrix A. Let's now calculate the determinant again, even though we already know the answer, but by doing cofactor expansion along a column instead of a row. And let's use the second column instead of the first column because as it turns out, any row or column will do for cofactor expansion. So when I write down my cofactor expansion along column two, 
the coefficients in this expression are going to change. The first sum in that I write down involves the first entry of column two. I don't use the entries of row one anymore. I use the entries of column two. So I'll be using these. And my signs are gonna be a little bit different too. So the first sign that I see showing up in this formula is minus one to the, to the one plus two. One, because I'm in row one, and two, because I'm in column two. So that gives me three, which is an odd number, which means that that sign becomes a negative one. And the entry is one, and that's what I see here. Then I take the determinant of the smaller matrix that I get by crossing out the first row and the second column. Now I go on to my next sum end, and here my sign comes from looking at minus one to the two plus two, because I am now in spot two, two. My entry goes here as well. I cross out the second row, but I remain on the second column, continuing to cross out the second column. So I'm proceeding down column two. This is why it's cofactor expansion, expansion along column two. And then I get another zero as my third entry, and so this last term is gonna be zero times whatever it is. So here I have a negative and then a two by two determinant to work out, a positive one and another two by two determinant to work out, which gives me six minus 14, which is again minus eight. It doesn't matter which row or column I expand along, I'm still gonna get the same determinant at the end of the calculation. One thing you may have noticed as we calculated both of these were that zeros were really handy. Anytime you have a zero as an entry, it doesn't matter what the submatrix is, you're going to be multiplying by zero so you can ignore it. That means there's a strategy to doing cofactor expansions. You're going to want to expand along the column or the row that has the most amount of zeros in it to reduce the amount of arithmetic that you have to do. Let's look at another example where we can strategically pick a row that's going to make the calculation much easier. So in this example, let's calculate the determinant of A when A is this monster five by five matrix. At a quick glance, you can see that there is a row that's gonna work out better than all the other rows for us, and that is row number four, because in row number four, we have zero, 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 nine, and zero. The only thing you really need to be mindful of when you work out the cofactor expansion here is what the sign ought to be. Of course, you can always use I plus J when you're in doubt. So let's first do our cofactor expansion along row four. This cofactor expansion is going to look like minus zero plus zero minus zero plus nine times the determinant of the matrix that we get by deleting that fourth row in addition to the fourth column because we need to delete the column in which the nine is sitting and then subtracting off another zero. It's important to keep track of signs and the sign that matters here is the sign in front of the nine. This is a plus because this came from spot four, four and minus one to the four, uh, to the, to the four plus four uh, is going to be a positive one. So this gives us our cofactor expansion for the determinant of A, but there's still more work to do. We wanna have nine times the determinant of this smaller matrix. So we're now left with the task of calculating the determinant of a, of a somewhat simpler matrix. And here, you can choose whatever cofactor expansion makes that task easier. Before we chose row four, just because it had lots of zeros in it, so now we want to look for the row or column that has the most amount of zeros in it again. And I think our best bet is going to be column number two. When I see column number two, I see a zero, a zero, a three, and then another zero. So next, what we're gonna do is expand along column two. This expansion is going to look like a nine, and then use parentheses. Use lots of parentheses when you calculate determinants, but large parentheses to indicate where we do the smaller determinant calculation. Inside the large parentheses, we're going to have a negative zero plus zero minus three times yet another smaller determinant followed by another zero, and that's what we have written here. Minus zero plus zero minus three times a smaller determinant plus zero. Something that you wanna keep in mind is that just like your cofactor expansion starting over when you calculate the smaller determinant, your sign calculations need to start over as well. 
you index with the matrix that you are working with, in this case, the three by three matrix, the little matrix, and not the indexing from the parent matrix. So here, the reason why we have uh, a negative sign in front of the three is because we're doing cofactor expansion here along uh, column two. And so the first entry, this sign, comes from minus one to the one plus two, which is negative, and then it alternates from there. This negative entry here comes from three plus two, which is five. So we have a smaller matrix that shows up again inside this calculation. And now we turn our attention towards this matrix. So I've consolidated now my nine and my minus three is a negative 27 times the determinant of the three by three matrix that you see here. At this point, there isn't a super great choice for cofactor expansion. You could take the third column or you could take the second row. Those are your only choices that have a zero showing up in them. I'm gonna go ahead and select the second row along which to do my expansion. And when I get that, I have my minus 27 times, and now I have a couple things to calculate inside the large parentheses. I take negative 11 times the determinant of the smaller two by two, plus four times the determinant of the other smaller two by two that I get from deleting the first column and the second row, and then the second column and the second row. I have the two by two matrices to which I need to work out their determinants, and that leaves me in the end with the determinant of this matrix. So hopefully that demonstrates cofactor expansion. You definitely should practice this many times to get the hang of it. I wanna run through a couple other techniques and tricks for calculating determinants easily and put off the discussion of the meaning of the determinant for another lecture. Something which is obvious from the formula of cofactor expansion is that if you have any matrix with a, an entire row of zeros or an entire column of all zeros, the determinant is going to be zero. You can see this directly from the formula. There's going to be a zero in, in every sum in. So this is a quick and easy way to identify the determinant of a matrix. You don't have to write down any formulas. If you see an entire row of zeros anywhere in your matrix or an entire column, the determinant is automatically going to be zero. And the matrix will be singular. Another trick is for triangular matrices. It is super easy to calculate the determinant of a triangular matrix. So I have here a diagonal matrix, which is a special kind of matrix that is both upper and lower triangular at the same time. But whether you have a matrix which is upper triangular with non-zero entries above the diagonal or a matrix which is lower triangular with non-zero entries below the diagonal or straight up diagonal, then you can see from the cofactor expansion formula that the determinant of this matrix is just gonna be the product of the entries down the diagonal. So this is another uh, another quick calculation that you can do. As a warning, your standard row operations that you do to manipulate a matrix like swapping rows or scalar multiplying a row, these can potentially change the determinant of the matrix. In particular, if you perform a single row swap, the effect on the determinant is going to be to change its sign. If you scalar multiply a row, it's going to multiply the determinant as well. The only row operation that doesn't change the determinant is when you add a multiple of one row to another row. So a bit of a warning, you may want to avoid row operations if you're calculating a determinant, unless you have a good understanding of how those row operations affect the determinant. This is a topic that we'll discuss more in the next lecture when we talk more about the meaning of the determinant.